Alright guys, not a rant video, but redemption. The Cavs, 120 to 90, beat the Warriors in a redemption game three. Now if you're a Warriors fan, don't freak out. I'll get to that later a little bit in the video. But guys, the Cleveland Cavaliers beat the Warriors 120 to 90, and they did the things that I said that they should be doing in game two. So if you want to check out my game two rant, I really ran in that video, they did a lot of things. So what they do right, they shot a higher field goal percentage, which I mentioned in my game two video. And they actually out-rebounded the Warriors. LeBron James actually had more shots made than he had turnovers. Game 2, he had 7 shots, and he had 7 turnovers. Now, LeBron James in this game, he had his fair share of turno turnovers, and he did contribute to turnovers if he wasn't directly involved in the turnover itself. Things he needs to improve on. However, Vince Carter said exactly what I stated in Game 2, in my Game 2 rant. Almost verbatim. You can go watch my game two uh, rant and actually just as a couple days ago and actually see what Vince Carter actually said. Vince Carter basically said what I said is that the Cleveland Cavaliers are not buying the ball fakes that the Warriors do. So the Warriors do a couple things to create space. They'll do the pick and roll, which some are illegal, and yes they are, and I'll get to that in a minute. Some of those were actually called this game. They'll do the pick and roll. And they'll also ball fake, they'll, so they'll fake a three, Steph, Steph Curry's known for doing this, he'll fake the three, and then create space, and make, then take the shot. I said in my game two, that Matthew, when Matthew Della Vidova covered Steph Curry, he was not buying Steph Curry's ball fake. So those are a couple things that the Cavs did do. LeBron James, 32 points. Kyrie Irving, 30 points. But here's the really thing. The Cavs just looked better without Kevin Love. They look, they just play better. I'm not just saying that because the Cavs won on their home court and Kevin Love was not, not in the game. I'm not just saying that. Jefferson compliments Tristan Thompson so much better in the trenches. And Jefferson just does things. Just He makes quick decisions. He's not going to sit there and try to post you up all day. He's going to shoot the ball or he's going to pass it really quick. LeBron James... Finally attacked the basket, which led to a better efficiency, with which led him to doing a couple things. Here's the thing about Steph Curry, things that should bother you if you're a Warriors fan, but not overall. Steph Curry, actually, I'm going to stick with this. He led the Warriors with 19 points, okay? But I'm going to throw this little stat out at you really quick. Steph Curry, actually, through the first three games of the NBA Finals, he's the worst in history. In total points for people that average 30 points in the regular season. So let me repeat that for you. He has the fewest points through three games of the NBA Finals, which is 48. He had 11 the first game, 18 the second, 19 the third. 48 points through, through the first three games of the NBA Finals. He's the worst in NBA history for people that average 30 points a game in the regular season. I'm looking at the list, guys. He's by far the worst. So again, fewest points through three games of NBA Finals for people that average 30 points a game in the regular season. Steph Curry's beyond the worst. However, so with besides LeBron James attacking the basket, here's the thing. I, my other complaint was Mozgov in Game 2. The refs were called an illegal pick, an illegal block on Mozgov twice. And one in garbage time on Mozgov for setting an illegal pick and that kind of upset me because one of the things that the Warriors do, what guys, you know what they do, the pick and roll, right? Screens and picks and rolls. If even 10 to 20% of those were illegal, they should be called. If they're going to call on the Cavs, they should call it on the Warriors, and they did this game. So for Cavalier fans, that should be elating. For Warriors fans, that should scare you a little bit. The refs are starting to call those a little bit of those illegal picks. They're kind of getting a little touchy with that. As I said, LeBron James, he missed a dunk during the game. He thought he was fouled. Guys, he just missed the dunk. I mean, um, the Warriors went up and just just played him, contested it. He just missed the dunk. It was kind of like a funny highlight reel. I mean, when he slam dunked the ball, the ball flew the other direction. He just missed the dunk. No, he did not get fouled. Also, with Steph Curry, the interesting thing is with Steph Curry, this is the first time, guys, get this number, this is the first time Steph Curry has made free throws in this whole series. It took him three games. Now, guys, for Warrior fans, what I'm telling you not to be upset is because of this. You're leading 2-1. to one. 
And here's the big de delineation. So, right, Vince Carter repeated exactly what I said in Game 2. Look at my Game 2 rant. You'll see a lot of stuff that I said happen. I'm not, I'm not taking credit for anything. I'm not the, pro you know, but I'm just telling you. Um, check that out, my Game 2, uh, on my, my Game 2 review. Because, like I said, the Cavs, Game 1, 38.1%. Game two, they got worse, 35%. In this game, 52% shooting. And that's the two things they need to prove in, rebounding and shooting. But Steph Curry, oh, th th now you're going to hear all these numbers. Steph Curry, historically the worst in NBA Finals in history for total points, scored with only 48 for people that averaged 30 points in a season. That's the first time he made free throws. Here's the thing about that. Steph Curry was 6 for 13. Now, granted, he scored most of his points in the fourth quarter. Um, he scored 13 points in the in the in the fourth quarter out of his 19. But he was six for 13. That is not bad. Cavaliers fans would love if Kevin Love shot like that. Six for 13. Are you kidding me? That's really good. Really good for Steph Curry. So I wouldn't get upset. Here's the quick delineation. Warriors, you're you're up two to one. And your leading scores in Game 1 was Sean Livingston with 20 points. Game 2, Draymond Green with 28. And now Steph Curry with 19. It's the first game that the Warriors, one of their superstars, has led the game in scoring. Where the Cleveland Cavaliers, this is the delineation between the two. The Cleveland Cavaliers rely on their stars to score. Okay? LeBron James, again, 32 points. Kyrie Irving, 30. Their stars showed up. Their, star, their stars scored majority of the points, okay, in the Cleveland game. Finally, though, the role players stepped up for the Cleveland Cavaliers. J.R. Smith was knocking down threes like it was nothing. J.R. Smith stepped up. That was huge. LeBron James attacking the basket, actually having efficiency, which I talked about in my Game 2. I'll leave the Game 2 video out of it now. The Warriors, the role players in their bench, is doing most of their scoring. And this is where they need their superstars to step up. Klay Thompson and Steph Curry. Now, I wouldn't panic if I was a Warriors fan, because here's why. You lead the series 2-1. to one. Your star players are not scoring. Here's the scary part, though. Steve Kerr actually pulled Steph Curry out of the game at one moment, and actually on the sidelines, they actually caught it on camera, where Steve Kerr looks at Steph Curry like this and goes, are you okay? They actually caught that on camera. So that's one thing. Steph Curry, he's not really hurt. He just asked him, like, dude, you all right? Kind of like that. Post-game, Steve Kerr couldn't explain why Steph Curry was shooting the way that he was shooting. But realistically, he, he, guys, he still shot pretty good percentage-wise. So you're going to hear all these stories of uh, Steph Curry's this, Steph Curry's this. Uh, you might hear different announcers say different things. Guys, Steph Curry, yeah, he's not taking as many shots as he used to. And maybe he's not making it with the much efficiency that he's used to. But you know what? You're still up 2-1, to one, and Klay Thompson and Steph Curry have not gone off yet. So now let's get to the final talking points. Again, the Cavs 120 to 90. The Cavs are actually playing good. They're not buying the ball fakes um, of the Warriors. The refs are actually calling the illegal screens that the Warriors are running, so that should be a concern. The Cavs star players are doing as they always have. They're scoring. However, for the first time, the role players actually stepped up in lieu of Kevin Love not even being there, which is... I think they just look better versus the Warriors without Kevin Love. And I'm not just saying that because they just won. Warriors, I wouldn't be too upset. Um, your role players didn't step up like they did in the previous games. Steph Curry led the team with 19 points. Um, I would be worried after if Game 4, though, if Steph Curry and Klay Thompson don't show up, then that's when you have to start getting a little bit worried. But right now, if I'm a Warriors fan, I'm not that worried. The Cavs took one at home. And LeBron James played really good. Again, LeBron James still needs lower turnovers. Just because he scored 32 points, he was involved in a lot of turnovers. And the stats aren't going to show that, but he was involved in a lot of turnovers. He still he missed layups in Game 2. He missed a dunk in Game 3. So LeBron's still not playing at 100%. So that's it. That's my take. That's all I got. Guys, tell me what you think. All right, guys, that's it. Have a good one.